Hey everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing all of my pickups for this last half of March and you may have noticed this is a little bit earlier than normal just because uh, we do have the Easter weekend coming up which is a public holiday here so no mail service as of Friday up until Tuesday next week. So I thought I'd just get it over with whilst um, I was thinking about rather than just waiting you know, the extra couple days to be at the very end of the month. But there's a lot of manga to get through, so I'll just get straight into it. So first of all I'm going to be talking about my second hand pickups, all of which I bought through Better World Books, which is a fantastic website that actually helps um, support libraries and local reading funds across the world. Um, and so I got volume 13 of Kaze Hikaru, just one of the multiple volumes that I need for the second half of this series. It is still ongoing in English. Uh, we are very, 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 very far behind the Japanese release, but it is a really interesting, different Jose series um, that we get one volume a year, so it's not completely dead in the water, but it is very slow. Um, so yes, volume 13, volume 14, volume 17, volume 18, and as I said, these are all ex-library books, so they did have stickers and such on them, volume 19, but those are pretty easy to remove with a hair dryer and a bit of rubbing alcohol and volume 20 so there are 25 or 26 volumes of the series currently out in English I do have a couple other volumes um, that I'm expecting to arrive in the mail but I haven't fully caught up with the English releases as of yet but still a sizable amount of that series that I finally uh, picked up so I can continue reading Next is my other secondhand pickup, which is Nabari no O, Volume 3. Um, yeah, I've mentioned this series before. It's sort of a ninja drama written by uh, Yuki Kamatani, a mangaka, who I'm very interested in their work. Uh, this series has been available for ages from Yen Press, but um, I sort of didn't really have much interest in it until I learned a bit more about the mangaka and wanted to read more of their work so uh, I took the opportunity to actually give the series a try and I'm glad that I did. It's a lot different than what I expected and I do hope to have a first impressions video for this series uh, coming up. So I've now got five or six volumes of this series so not quite half of what the complete run is but Hopefully I'm trying to get through this series throughout this year. Next we go into the new release manga. Continuing on with Yen Press titles, we have the latest volume of Horimiya, Volume 10, by Hiro and Daisuke Hagiwara. I really, 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 really enjoy this shoujo manga. It's not anything super new or unique, but it's done really, really well. This particular volume was pretty good. It did give us a lot of background into this character here, the student council president, um, as well as sort of continue on a little bit with what happened in the last volume, which was pretty major. Uh, it's really good. Um, yeah, it's nothing like fantastic. It's not going to change your life, but it's very funny. I really like all of the characters, all of their friendships and how they interact. Um, they feel a lot like pretty typical teenagers and just the situational comedy is done very, very, very well. Even when it does play with pretty typical tropes of shoujo manga, um, even stuff that I don't really super like, um, it's still done in a very humorous, well-meaning like, meaning way. Uh, yeah. I really enjoy this series and I'm glad to see more of it. Another new title from Yen is Aka 13, Volume 2, Territory Inspection Department by Natsume Ono. I 
love this series. Um, I'm a big Nasnayono fan. If you've watched any of my videos from the past year, I did finally complete all of her works that were available in English. I have bought them all and they are all in the collection. She's a great mangaka. I think um, she's quite well known, but sort of within a niche audience. But in saying that, she has very passionate fans, sort of like Fumi Yoshinaga, very well regarded and well respected and has a lot of series available in English but isn't necessarily a artist or mangaka that you hear a lot of people talk about within the mainstream. This particular series is only six volumes long so it isn't super duper long of a commitment as with her other longer series uh, House of Five Leaves but it's very interesting. It's sort of a cross between somewhat of a spy thriller along with sort of a slice of life um, everyday series and all mixed up with a French sensibility. It's very much like reading a comicized version of a French film, which I think is very Ono. Uh, her series all have a very European sense to them. Uh, a lot of her earlier works are set in Italy or have Italian characters. You can definitely see she has a fondness for um, Europe and sort of the people and the culture. And Aka, in some ways, although it is this fantasy um, or non-realistic setting, uh, it definitely has echoes of that fondness. There's a lot of really interesting um, separate cultures and things introduced in this series because if you have no familiar familiarity with this series at all, it did have a anime last year or the year before, I think it was last year, which was great. Um, one of my favorites of that year, but it it's follows one particular character who's an inspector for uh, Aka 13, which is a country that sort of is formed of 13 different provinces. And previously they were all 13 different countries, but are now sort of collectively ruled under this one monarchy. Um, and so there's been sort of hints of risings and you know that sort of thing within the community it's not necessarily this wonderful uh, oh we all live in peace now thing but it is you can see there's a lot of different cultures and people of different backgrounds um, within this series and in addition a lot of different ways how each country or territory governments themselves, so like actually runs and has their police force. It's very, very interesting and it's definitely an Ono work. I really am enjoying re reading this for the first time or and re-experiencing the series. It's just one that is quintessentially um, very evocative of what you expect from this author. I I'm a big fan and I hope more people do uh, enjoy this series because it's one that's a little bit different from pretty much everything else that is available right now. Then with Kodansha's new releases we have the most recent volume of Land of the Lustrous, Volume 5, Haruko Ichikawa's currently ongoing series about sort of the questioning humanity and life and sense of self and purpose and all of those sorts of things. It's really a series that has gone in a very different direction than maybe the first volume shows or or from your first experience with it. I absolutely adore this series. I think it's one of the best new ongoing titles that we have and Kodansha has done a great job with this release. Uh, Ichikawa has a wonderful, wonderful, striking art style. Um, I know some people complain about it, but I don't think they truly understand 
how how her style evokes and the the sense of movement and just how wonderfully she plays with with deep deep blacks and then very stark whites you can just experience everything you need off of the page through her artwork um and all of the characters are all very interesting although they have um sort of a familiar story they they don't necessarily have a particular um different background they all have their own character quirks and their own reasons for doing things our main character is absolutely intriguing and their own journey of questioning and finding themselves is very very evident uh, you you really do take um get caught up in this character's journey and you feel everything that they feel and sort of the questions they ask and the doubts they have it's marvelous uh each new volume of this just gets better and better and i cannot wait until the next volume is out because i'm a big fan and uh they can't come out quickly enough even though they're already coming out like every two or three months so i should just be patient but it's hard being patient when something this good is um coming out and we do have a couple volumes still to go until we're caught up uh Wonderful series, cannot wait for more. Another fantastic new release from Kodansha is To Your Eternity Volume 3, Yoshitoka Oima's newest series. I did do a first impressions on this one, so if you are interested, that's from a couple weeks ago. This is a marvelous, marvelous series, and even if you weren't necessarily a fan of her previous work, A Silent Voice, I would encourage everyone to read this. Um, I'm caught up on all of the chapters on Crunchyroll's manga app, and the way this series has gone is very, very, very different from maybe what the first volume or these first three volumes show. Uh, but in saying that, these first three volumes are essential for the foundations of the story that Oim is trying to tell. It's so good. I think that uh, Fushi, our main character, is very interesting. This particular story, uh, or this particular book, um, has a very... With the last two books, each each book sort of encapsulates um, a different character's story, and from what I can tell, that continues for the next several books. Um, our main character meets people and sort of has a snapshot into their lives for a certain period of time, and from that learns something about life and and humanity and and living. Um, this is probably, mm, I think it's the strongest, or at least definitely so far, of this series, um, just with the lives that he's, he's encountered in this particular book, but they're, all of them are fantastic, and you really do get a sense of why this character would get attached to so many different people, and for different reasons, and how how quickly he's grown or they've grown I shouldn't really gender a weird space thing that uh, anyway it's really good um and from here it just gets better uh, from where I've read in the manga it's phenomenal the the larger message of um sort of hope and sense of self and humanity and and living is even more evident as you continue to go on and seeing so many different perspectives of life and surviving and and just getting on with your own personal journey is so amazing it's Yoshitoka Oima really understands human nature and human emotions uh I think she's just done an incredible job not only with this series but with her previous work and I I think it's it's just a testament that her stories are so well 
loved and well known. Um, it's not it's not like a silent voice, which is much more grounded in reality um, and definitely has like a modern setting uh, with somewhat of a more relatable uh, overall plot and theme. But that's not to say that this, just because of the more fantastical setting of it and sort of how it's evolved, it doesn't mean it's any less relatable or human. It's just so good. Um, I would expect a lot of people are already reading this, but if you haven't, I would encourage you to give it a shot. Um, especially if you're not necessarily fully sold on the first volume, it does... It's very different. It takes a couple volumes to sort of understand the point of the series. And yeah, it's just... It's just really, really, really good. And Volume 4 comes out soon, which I think wraps up... Yeah, will wrap up this part of the story um, for Fushi. And then we go on into other characters later on. Really good and really wonderful. I'm so glad that Kodansha has released it and so quickly too. Continuing on with this uh, sort of fantasy setting, we have the most volume, recent volume of Children of the Whales, Volume 3 by Abu Umeda. Um, Viz, again, a very nice release from them. It is one that's a little bit different. Um, I haven't read this one yet, but it's a very compelling, interesting setup to a somewhat familiar story. I do think that Umeda's built this very fascinating world around the series and I'm always really interested to read more with this series. Um, it does remind me of a lot of other things which isn't to say it's bad or it feels um, derivative uh, but it is maybe one to look into if you're a fan of those certain other titles. It really reminds me of something like Keely or, oh, I can't remember the name of the other thing, but it, it it reminds me of a lot of stuff, and it's, that's not to say that it, that's bad, but it's nice to have this sort of series, because I haven't seen it, um, or at least I haven't seen it in a while from a manga, um, and Umeda's done a really great job. She has a really lovely art style, which I know is very important to a lot of people, um, but the strength of the story sort of holds it up on its own. I don't know whether I'll be buying the next couple volumes immediately as they come out, just because I am sort of prioritizing what I'm spending on um, over the next couple months, because I am, if I haven't mentioned before, I am going to South Korea in uh, September, so I'm sort of parsing down and cutting back on my actual purchases. But um, that's not to say I'm I'm dropping the series, it's just one that I feel I can come back to later, um, or just put off for a little while and not necessarily, um, lose anything. So, I mean, it's a new release, they're not gonna go out of print anytime soon, but it is one that, um, is intriguing. It doesn't, it hasn't fully grasped me like some of the previous series that I've talked about have. But it's still one that I think is definitely worth uh, trying out. Yeah, so it's really... It's interesting and good. And I do hope to read this volume, you know, over the next couple of days. And yeah, I'm looking forward to more. Although that might not be an immediate uh, thing. Then we have the most recent volume of Golden Kamui. This is such a fun uh, seinen series. It's just, it's one that I feel like maybe a lot of people are already reading, hopefully with the upcoming anime this next month. Oh, it's coming up quick. Uh, we'll encourage more people to try it. It's one that, um, again, sort of rides this very fine line of being this ac very action-packed um 
you know, dramatic story and then this comedic, lighthearted, almost slice of life uh, series. But it does those sides very, very well. I find it fascinating um, just for having so much about the Ainu culture. And I really enjoy this time period um, in Japanese history. I think uh, we could definitely uh, see more from this era. It's sort of very much at the cusp of when things were really changing in Japan. And uh, sort of the skirmishes and things that were happening because of that. Uh, it's it's really interesting, and every new volume is great to read. I really liked uh, some of the character development in this particular volume, uh, and I really hope that I can read more soon, because these two are coming out very quickly, um, so I'm looking forward to that. There's ten volumes out in Japan, I think, uh, so we are a little bit behind, but... Um, yeah, it's it's just really good. Um, definitely one to try out if you're looking for an action series um, while still having like a pretty great sense of humour. I would definitely recommend this one. Next is the only BL that I got for this uh, last two weeks and that is Blue Morning Volume 7 by Shoko Hidaka. Uh, the currently ongoing sort of historical BL series. It's very good. Um, like with a lot of the BL that I tend to pick up, um, not all of it, mind you, but a lot of it, this is much more plot-focused than necessarily uh, romance-focused, insofar as, like, there's other stuff going on, aside from just, you know, a couple falling in love or you know, starting a relationship or anything like that. Again, this one with setting is very, very interesting. Um, I really like what Hidaka's done. Um, it's one that I think if you like something like Gerard and Jacques from Fumi Yoshinaga, uh, you would definitely like this because it, it plays around with sort of the historical expectations on individuals and sort of status and and how those things affect how people interact with each other and sort of how society views them. It's really, really, really good. I didn't start reading this series until last year, uh, early last year, I think. Um, Although it was a series that I wanted to try for a very, very, very long time. I'm glad I did finally give it a shot. It is a little bit longer. Um, like I said, this is the seventh volume and it is still ongoing. Uh, I don't know whether or not it's going to wrap up in the next couple volumes, but it is one of the longer uh, BL series coming out in English, at least. Um, I think sort of only stuff like World's Greatest First Love and those sorts of titles are longer, but, um, oh, his favourite as well, that's longer. But it is a really solid series that gives you a lot to process and read. Um, so there's a lot of actual dialogue in these books, uh, which is one of my biggest, uh, things re actually reading it, because I did read the last, or the, from volume two to six for a reading challenge. It took me a lot longer than I really expected because there is so much talking about those things that I mentioned before, politics or societal expectations, um, business, all of these things, um, which is fantastic, but it's not one that you can just really easily sit down and breeze through. Um, there is a bit of mental... Um, engagement to the series, which I really appreciate. Fantastic series. Definitely one to pick up if you're looking for a re really solid uh, BL or Yaoi series. Um, yeah, and comparatively to Shoko Hiraka's other works available in English, Not Enough Time and Does the Flower Blossom, this, I mean, it is longer, but it also has a lot more relationship development than either of those two things. It gets sort of more explicit a lot faster. 
in those series. So if that's something you're interested in as well, then you will get it with this series. It's definitely one that I always look forward to a new volume. We don't get them all too often, but it is uh, exciting to read them once we do. <laughs> and finally for this month we have the most recent volume of Spice and Wolf, volume 19, Spring Log 2, which does mean it's a uh, short story collection comparatively to like part of the larger plot. Um, and I'm really enjoying these extra volumes that Hasakura is putting out. They're just great additions. I really like this world and these characters, so it's nice having something more to actually read with this series. Um, I also really enjoy Wolf and Parchment, the spin-off series. I'm a big fan of Hasakura's light novels, um, and I think a lot of people are fans of Spice and Wolf. It's definitely a series to get into if you are a fan of the anime. Uh, the mo the manga. I can't speak to the manga because I've never read it, but the light novels are phenomenal. Um, just a great translation by Yen Press and the characters themselves are just so well written that their personalities and chemistry really shines through. Uh, yeah, it's just a great, great feeling having more Spice and Wolf because it did finish two years ago. It was um, sort of wrapped up in volume 17, but with the new anniversary and just the popularity, I'm glad that we are getting more. Um, although, if it had just stayed at 17 volumes, that would have been a wonderful end too. Um, I'm like that, I'm liking that we get to see, uh, sort of beyond the happily ever after, I should say. It's something you don't necessarily see a lot of in media, but it's nice. It's nice having sort of this established um, precedent with these characters and understanding who they are and what they're doing in their relationship, um, but still getting, you know, even though their journey or their story has quote-unquote ended, there's still so much more to life after you've reached your goal or after you've achieved that thing that you set out to do. Um, so in that sense, Spice and Wolf, these later volumes are really wonderful. Um, and whenever volume 20 comes out, I'm sure I'm picking it up because it is. It's really, really good and one that I'm sure most Spice and Wolf fans are picking up. Um, and I've said this before, but if you're looking for a light novel recommendation from me, uh, this series, along with Book Girl, Kelly, and Bakano, would definitely be my first uh, to encourage people to read because they are unlike a lot of what's pretty typical within light novel culture right now. Um, that being more so like find yourself in a fantasy world, which are, you know, that's great. Isekai is its own genre, but that sort of flooded the market currently. Um, so if you want a little bit, something a little bit different and off pace from that, uh, this series is a great one to go to. Don't be sort of put off by the length of it. It's really very w well worth it. So that's everything that I got for this last half of March. There is just manga, as you can see, as well as the one light novel, um, as for next pickup videos, depending on how shipping decides to grace me, I will have at least one anime to show off. Probably two, but who knows in regards to that. Um, as well as my pretty normal um, sort of pre manga pre-orders, as well as the second half of this, uh, this order here for my secondhand manga. Um, but yeah, nothing I think too surprising. The anime, one might be a surprise, the other one should not be a surprise at all and is one I've really, 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 really been looking forward to. Um, but otherwise, yes, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the month and a wonderful Easter. I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Bye till then.